in some of the hardest A-level physics questions, they're going to give you an equation and they're going to expect you to recognise it and be able to put it in the form y equals mx plus c and plot any graph. And that's easy for some equations, but when it comes to power laws and exponentials, it's a little bit harder and you have to deal with how do I plot a log log graph or do I plot a log graph? That's what I'm going to tell you in this video. So in physics, we're always looking for proportionality. We're always looking to boil our laws down to y is proportional to x. One variable is proportional to another because then we can write an equation because we can work out the constant of proportionality, something like y equals kx. It's not always a proportional relationship though. Sometimes that is not a zero intercept. And in some examples, you're going to have to make an equation like this. This is Einstein's photoelectric equation into the form y equals mx plus c. So it's about carefully being able to rearrange and think to myself, how can I get an equation which is y equals mx plus c? And then can I say what graph to plot based on that? In other words, what's the y variable and what's the x variable? So in this case, the y variable is the maximum kinetic energy. That's something we can measure. And the x variable is the frequency. Again, that's something we can measure. So we can change the frequency of our light. We can measure the kinetic energy of the electrons. And hey presto, we've got a graph. We find that's a straight line graph, OK. And what is the intercept? Well, the intercept is the work function, because it intercepts the y-axis. And that y-axis intercept is the work function, is the energy needed just to release the electrons in the first place. I hope you can see how just with some simple rearranging, we can make this equation into form y equals mx plus c. That's a straightforward one. But what about the more difficult ones? And especially in the practical papers, that's in Edexcel, that's paper free. But whenever you're doing the practical papers, that's going to be, uh, the, do I plot a log graph or do I plot a log log graph? So especially in the practical papers, they're going to chuck at you some algebra that you might be familiar with or you might not be familiar with. And you have to think, is it a power law or is it an exponential? Power laws are essentially the exponent, the, the indice of one of the variables is a fixed number, it's a constant. So if you know that you've been told this is a constant uh, and that is the indice of a variable, then that's a power law. In the exponential graphs, okay, that's when one of your variables is the exponent. One of your variables is the indice of a fixed number. And that's going to tend to be E, the exponential number. But it could be any number. So if you're told this number varies and this number is a constant, then that is going to be an exponential graph. And you need to know how to get them into straight line graphs. And the answer is we use logs. So in this example, I'm using the Stefan Boltzmann law, which relates the luminosity of stars or the power output of stars, you could also say, to their surface temperature. And it, the proportionality is luminosity is proportional to T to the power of four, temperature to the power of four. So that's a power law. Stefan Boltzmann constant is fixed and the area of the star is also fixed for that given star. So if you recognize power law, your first step is to take logs of both variables in that. So in this case, it's log L and it's log T. Now, the gradient of the graph is going to be the exponent of the X variable. The gradient of the graph is going to be whatever, in this case, T is raised to. So we should be able to take data, log those two sets of data, plot log L versus log T, Calculate a gradient and it should be 4. So they could chuck at you any kind of equation and you'd have to recognize power law because the power is a fixed number and use your graph to do the gradient and that's going to give you whatever that power is, whatever that indice is. What about the y-intercept? Well, that's going to be the log of whatever two fixed constants you've got in that equation. So in this case, it's log sigma a, which is log Stefan Boltzmann constant times by the area of the star. But that will just be another constant they've given you. Maybe they'll call it k or something like that in that bit of algebra they've given that you might not be familiar with. So the last one is exponentials. And in the exponential case, you just plot a log graph. So you leave your x variable as it is. So I'm going to use the example that you're probably familiar with, which is radioactive decay. And that is n equals n naught e to the power of minus lambda t. Now lambda is the decay constant and t is the variable. So lambda is a constant, but t is the variable, the x variable that changes in our set of data that we've got. So we take logs of both sides and we end up with log n equals log n naught minus lambda t. So y is log n, log n naught is the y-intercept, minus lambda is the gradient, and t is the x variable. Again, we can just log our number of undecayed atoms, log our y variable, and we can plot that against t, and the gradient of that is going to be lambda, or the de decay constant. 
that can be generalized because all exponentials follow the form y equals some constant times by e to the power of some constant, a decay constant or a growth constant, x, okay? So y equals, so y equals y naught e to the power of mu x. These are quite tricky, but go ahead and check out my exam playlist and there's an example of one of these where I actually go through how to do that. It's just a matter of keeping a cool head and recognizing, do I have a power law? Do I have an exponential? I should plot a log log graph or I should plot a log graph. Thanks a lot for watching.